The Honda S2000 is a fantastic driver's car, and from a design perspective, I think it has aged exceptionally well. That being said, there are some aspects of the interior specifically that remind you that you're in a 20-year-old Honda. Today, we're gonna start the process of modernizing the interior of my quote-unquote old car while still maintaining the characteristics that make it such a special car to begin with. My name is Zahid, and welcome to part one of the interior overhaul for my Honda S2000. We're gonna start by tackling a very common and simple upgrade for the interior of the S2000, which is upgrading from the stock head unit to a modern one. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the way the stock head unit looks, but unfortunately, it's known for pretty terrible audio quality. Part of why this install has taken me so long to do is because I'm just not a fan of most modern head units. The fancy lights, the dials, it stands out so much and it reminds me of a UFO that just like crashed into my dash. So for the longest time, I decided that I'd rather not listen to music than look at a head unit I don't like looking at. And that stood true until I came across this. This is the Blahpunkt SQR46DAB and it first came out in 1986 when the Beastie Boys ruled the airways. But recently they reissued this. It has modern internals while still retaining a very period correct styling. We're gonna pair this up with a modify harness and DCI. If you can see that, boom. This will help us retain the original dash controls and make everything work seamlessly in a car keeping a very OEM clean look with modern audio technology, including Bluetooth. So let's get to it. Like mentioned earlier, we're using the Modify kit to retain our dash controls. There are other options you can go with, but Modify makes S2000 specific parts that will make your life a whole lot easier. Using Modify's color-coded instructions, we'll begin by connecting the wires from the Modify harness to the harness that comes labeled from Blahpunk. Now, don't roast me for my wiring job, all right? I got paranoid they were gonna come apart, so they look crazy, but I assure you they work. Assuming you wired the head unit up correctly, unfortunately I didn't my first time around, but more on that later, you can now begin removing the stock head unit. If you're in an AP2 like me, you'll have to pop off the center console first, and then you can carefully pull the radio door cover and the surrounding trim off. From here, use a Phillips head to remove the four screws holding the head unit in place, and then carefully pull out the head unit to expose the connections. Disconnect the two wiring connections and remove the antenna plug to loosen the stock head unit free. With the head unit removed, you can now transfer the bracket to the new head unit. You might have to play around with the positioning of the bracket to get it to line up just right when you place it in the dash. When installing the new head unit, you're gonna start by taking the DCI and passing it all the way through to the passenger side. Modify specifically recommends keeping the DCI away from the back of the head unit to avoid it getting pinched or overheated. I suggest placing it behind the passenger dash area. From here, we'll connect the main wiring harness, antenna, and the steering controls jack. Funny story, what you're seeing here was actually my second, maybe third attempt to get this in. Turns out Modify forgot to send me the specific instructions for the Blahpunkt head unit, causing me to screw up the wiring. Luckily, my buddy Andrew Hake pointed me in the right direction and saved me from trying to figure this out by myself. Without giving too much away, let's just say he's an absolute legend in the S2000 community, and if you know, you know. That being said, no shade towards Modify. I'm a big believer in supporting companies that can support the Honda S2000, and Modify has been supplying S2000 owners with quality parts for many, many years. It's pretty unfortunate, he's actually closing his doors pretty soon, but I'm hoping that someone actually buys the company so that they can continue to keep making these awesome parts for the S2000. With the connections and bracket in, I went ahead and programmed it to the dash controls using Modify's instructions. When you're done setting up the dash controls, power down the unit, then turn it back on before trying to see if the dash controls work. This is the exact moment where I realized I scratched my radio door, so be careful and don't be an idiot like me. Besides the scratch, I could not be happier with how it all turned out. It looks amazing. Remember, the goal here is to modernize the interior, and I think I'm slowly achieving that. As great as the sound quality is with the head unit, and as much as I love the functionality of the DCI, I'm still not done. I'm still not done. So I got one more surprise for you guys. To really round this whole thing out, 
We're gonna be installing some door speakers as well. It seems pretty idiot proof. I think I can do it. And then I can finally enjoy good quality audio in my Honda S2000. Let's get this in. Let's get this in and let's wrap up part one of modernizing the interior of my S2000. Removing the door card is pretty simple. Two screws in the door handle, one by the lever to open the door, a pop clip towards the front, and lastly, after you pop it off all the door clips, there are a few electrical connections you'll have to disconnect. The whole thing shouldn't take more than five minutes. Next, you'll remove the stock speaker and transfer the outer case to the new speaker. Swapping out the outer case to the new speaker is what makes this install so easy. We're literally just replacing the speaker portion and that's it. With the new speaker in the old speaker case, we'll use the supplied wiring harness from Crutchfield to connect the speaker to the connection in the door. With the connection secured, you can screw the speaker case back into place and reverse the process of removing the door card to get everything put back together. Now repeat the process on the other side, it's as simple as that. Okay, so I just finished both sides and I think I wired everything right. I didn't break any door clips, which is amazing. And now it's time. Now it's time to give it a listen. I'm so stoked. Let's, uh, let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm so happy. Finally. This, is, this has been a pretty cool install experience. I'm glad I learned something. Wow, very happy. Okay, remember guys, this is part one of the interior overhaul series. The next couple of things I'm, I'm planning on doing are much more difficult and more in depth than this install. You know, the whole goal of this series is that one day, my daughter when she's old enough or my son when he's old enough, they're gonna be able to drive this S2000 and they're gonna feel like it's a time capsule. Like everything's gonna be pristine and it's gonna feel modern at the same time. It's not gonna feel like a 30 plus year old car by then. That's my goal. I want my kids to be able to drive this one day and appreciate how cool it was when I was younger. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Until next time, peace out, take care.